Rate Al Madrid narrowly escapes against Juventus thanks to controversial penalty it took until almost the last kick of the game, but Real Madrid are through to the Champions League's Emil finals after converting the stoppage time penalty over Juventus, scoring the aggregate tie-breaking goal to send them through 4-3 despite losing the match 3-1 at the Santiago Bernabeu. Juventus got off to a roaring start with a top-class run and pass from X-Ray Al Madrid midfielder Sami Kadir setting up a shockingly easy finish for Mario Mandzukic less than 90 seconds into the match. With that much-needed early first goal in hand, that gave Jude the confidence they needed to go striding forward time and again to go looking for the three additional goals they needed. Of course, that also meant that Madrid went searching for a goal of their own, desperate to restore their three-goal aggregate lead, meaning that the game went wide open in a hurry, with a flurry of scoring chances at both ends of the pitch. Madrid had some quality scoring chances, but a series of top-notch saves from Jimbo Pivofone and one brave block by Maralem Pijanik that may have rearranged his face a tad bit meant that Juventus hung on long enough for Manzu kick to score a second time in the 37th minute, this won a header off a perfectly weighted cross from Stefan Blick to Steiner. That goal narrowed Madrid's aggregate lead to just one goal, and with Juventus looking like the stronger side in the run of play that meant that the hour was truly growing desperate for the defending Champions League winners. Coming out of halftime, they made a double switch that highlighted that desperation, bringing on Marco Agusio and Lucas Vazquez for Gareth Bale and Case Miro. Dropping a key midfielder and an athletic attacker capable of stretching Juventus' defense was an incredible gamble, and one Zinedine side is very much needed to pan out. The early stretch of the second half were very physical, with both teams buckling down knowing there was a huge fight to be had in the final 45 minutes. So between that and the sheer technical quality of the first two goals, it somehow made perfect sense that Madrid would concede on a couple of major mistakes, with the ball pinging loose in the box before Blaise Matuidi hammered it at goal. Kaylor Navas appeared to have it covered, but inexplicably bobbled the ball, and its momentum took it into the back of the net for a shocking 61st minute equalizer. From there, it very much felt like the next goal would win the game, and both sides surged back and forth to try and get the goal for themselves. John Lorgi the phone came up huge a couple of times to keep Real Madrid off the scoreboard as the hosts worked to try and salvage the match, but Juventus were regularly dangerous on the counter-attack as well, leading to an incredibly tense last few minutes of regulation. How tense? So tense that during a frantic scramble in front of goal, Lucas Vazquez earned the very, very soft penalty in the final seconds of stoppage time, and Jimbo Gigalfone was sent off with a straight red card for the ferocity of his protests, continuously bumping and manhandling English referee Michael Oliver while screaming at him. That meant that potentially the last kick of the game would be at reserve keeper Wachek Skisny, who was lined up against Cristiano Ronaldo who scored to send Ray Al Madrid to the Champions League semi-finals, despite everything that happened during the rest of the match. Ray Al Madrid, Kaylor Navis, Danny Carvajal, Rafael Parent, Jesus Vallejo, Marcelo, Luke Amalric, Matteo Kravakic 75, Case Miro, Lucas Vasquez 46, Tony Cruz, Cisco, Gareth Bale, Marco Agu CO 46, Cristiano Ronaldo Gold, Ronaldo Pen. 90 plus 7 Juventus, Jimbor Gigalfone Red 90 plus 4 Mattia D. Filio Stefan Blick Steiner 17 Medi Benasha, Giorgio Cialini, Alexandro, Sammy Kadura, Maralem Pijanirk, Blaise Matuidi, Douglas Coaster, Gonzalo Higuain Wachek Skisny 90 plus 6 Mario Manzu Kick Goals, Manzu Kick 2, 37 Matuidi 61. Three things we saw were has Miss Sammy Kadura been all season? Part of the answer to this question is that Kadura has rarely been fully fit this season, but even when he has been fit, Kadura simply hasn't been his usual efficient self. That is, except for in this tie, when Kadura has looked a lot like the Sammy Kadura of old. Perhaps it's the extra kick of motivation to facing the team that gave up on him after he gave them so much, but Kadura found a whole new gear in this tie, and especially playing back at the Bernabeu. He was a force in midfield again, and for those who remember just how good he was at his height, it was a joy to see him playing so well again. 
A Ramos left Madrid back line is not a pretty thing. One thing that's been incredibly underrated about Sergio Ramos over the last five years or so is just how good he can be at organizing the back line. So with Ramos watching from an executive suite thanks to suspension, it shouldn't have been all that big a shock when Real Madrid's defenders were constantly caught out of position or making poor decisions when Juventus came up to apply pressure, especially Marcelo and Danny Carvajal, who were too often caught way upfield. Pair that lamp of organization with Juventus bringing a multi-angled attack that had Madrid's midfield spinning in circles, and it's little wonder that it was such a long day at the office for Rafael Herr and company. Gareth Bale may be done as a top-level player riddled by injuries, plagued by inconsistent playing time and spiraling confidence, Gareth Bale's Real Madrid career has been anything but successful. And if his woeful 45 minutes on the pitch in the first half are any indication, he might just not be capable of playing at an elite level anymore. He was a step slow, three or four beats out of sync with his teammates, and just didn't look like he had the skill or drive that once made him so lethal. Maybe a change of scenery this summer will help break him out of this year's long slump, but it's going to be a long and difficult road for Bale from here on up no matter what.